Welcome, listeners, and anyone who clicked on the wrong podcast icon. Welcome to more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies, or for short, one and a half white guys. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. And I'm Nick, your whole white guy. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, and most important, general nonsense. Uh, This being our first intro episode, Nick, I thought we could talk about our ideas why we wanted to start this podcast. Two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. I think we both thought that there was just a real gap in need for white guys and half white guys. Talking about, what was it? Movies? Or things they care about. That seems to be the gap in the podcast scene. So in general, that's why we decided to focus on it. We decided to talk about a movie that's both important for both of us. That is Jurassic Park. Now, I want you all to know something that Nathan and I, we have been friends for a long time, but I want, I want you all to know that probably 75% of this friendship is made up of just love for Jurassic Park. And you will understand why by the end of this, probably, if you don't click it off right now. So Jurassic Park, released in 1993, directed by Steven Spielberg. Never heard of him. Never heard of him once. He did, he, did, he did some smaller stuff. Yeah, Firelight, Duel, The Sugarland Express. Oh my God. <laughs> Nick, you want to read the IMDb summary we have I already planned? I do, out? I absolutely do. That Rotten Tomatoes one was just too fucking long. The IMDb summary of Jurassic Park. A pragmatic paleontologist touring an almost complete theme park on an island in Central America is tasked with protecting a couple of kids after a power failure causes the park's cloned dinosaurs to run loose. Now, to someone who just does not know, if you've lived under a rock your whole life, or you're just maybe, I don't know, fucking three years old, and you don't know what Jurassic Park is, that synopsis just gets more and more insane the, the more you read it by the time you get to the end. Like, dinosaurs aren't even mentioned. They are, they are the fourth word from the end of the synopsis dinosaurs are not mentioned once they're not it's very true they 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 really threw those in at the end as though there were a lot of other things that were more important it's it's if i could paraphrase this it's basically there's a scientist guy he he finds himself on he finds himself on an island and there are kids there there just happen to be kids there he's got to protect them from dinosaurs end of story (laughs) It really <laughs> tends to focus on maybe like the, the, the B and C story. I mean, in general for story development, it's the A story. But if you like look B and C and like the, the plot, the major plot is the dinosaurs running loose. Right? What is the A story? Like it's, it's, there's a theme park. There's people trapped on this theme park. There are dinosaurs in the theme park. The B story is, what is the B story? I mean, the B story is, is Alan Grant learning to like take care of kids because remember he, he traumatizes that kid in the beginning with like slashing at him with the fossilized raptor claw. And then he doesn't want to deal with the kids in the first part. Remember that he like traps, well, he's he traps poor Tim. He's actively avoiding them like to their faces. Like he is saying to their faces, can you like leave me alone? I don't care that you read my fucking book. Go away. I won't sign it. (laughs) It's true. I, I do also, I mean, we'll, we'll get into this later, but he waited a long time to get out of the car to help those kids when, when the T-Rex was trashing the car. I, I, he watched it for like a solid two minutes. I mean, I, I don't know if I could have done anything different, but it's just like, he's really, he really just watches it for a bit. What I aim to do is to ask you, when did you first see this? This movie, you, you were born the year it came out. Yeah, true. You had to have seen it in the nineties at some point, right? Yeah, I I would say that I remember watching it because my older brother had a really, I mean, the VHS tape wasn't beat up, but the sleeve for it was super beat up. I remember it being like torn up and I think I might have watched it. I must have watched it like sometime when I was in first grade, when I was like six for the first time. And that was 99, 90, like 99, like right before 2000. It might have been on when I was younger, but I don't really remember do you have a memory of watching it for the first time i think just terror i think every kid that saw the t-rex smash through the the top of the suv and scare the two kids in there was like oh dinosaurs aren't so fun anymore and it's that's probably one of the most terrifying 
things to see. So who's the biggest fan of dinosaurs? Children. Children. I mean, I love dinosaurs, but that was absolutely terrifying in some ways. That, that kind of leads me into when I first saw this movie, I had watched this making of documentary of it before I watched it. Really? I have a distinct memory of being little kid me is in a shopping cart. Like my mom is pushing a shopping cart around and there I am sitting in it. We're in Costco and she stopped to buy a VHS. Yeah. This is when VHS was a thing. And she put it in the cart and uh, I, I, I was kind of wowed by that considering I never saw my mom buy movies for herself. Like if she bought movies, it was like for me. She just picked it up, she looked at it and she dropped it in the cart and it was a two, uh, it was a two, um, tape set box set of Jurassic Park on one tape um, it was the movie on the second tape it was this making of documentary called the making of Jurassic Park this documentary is narrated by James Earl Jones about 50 minutes long and my parents knew I loved movies they knew I loved dinosaurs and they genuinely wanted to show me the movie but they, they were like it's going to scare him. It really is. And I think I had to have been like third, fourth grade, maybe they, what they did was they knew they had this making of. So they showed that to me first. And the first shot of Jurassic Park I ever saw was it's, it's after Tim in the car just goes careening into that tree. Oh, into the in, tree. And, the and it cuts to, it the just cuts roars. to the Rex just roaring. It's that first, sh- that first shot I ever saw was of the Rex roaring. And I just, I just went, what is this? That is pretty this cool. This looks insane. So they put it on in hopes that it, it would just make me not scared of it. They say, oh, this is how they made the movie. This is not real. Wow. But here's the kick. It didn't work because it still did scare me. <laughs> I think no, I think what the doc did was make me want to make movies more instead of realize, okay, this is not real. Yeah. So Jurassic Park is really kind of what made me want to pursue filmmaking kids. I'm as a kid that in space jam. Cause I was an impressionable very, very <laughs> idiot who thought Looney Tunes land underground was real. Well, I mean, that's just, I, I love the, the, the black and white, like two sides of the coin where it's like, and also space and jam. also space jam. I'd be down to make space jam. So I even so much. So I tried making a rocket ship to go down to Looney Tunes land. Cause that's how I thought you could only get there. And then I realized it wasn't. And that was the first dream I had that eventually died doing to the crushing inevitability called real life. And it certainly wasn't the last. I, I do have a question uh, regarding that VHS. Well, actually, I have two questions. First one, do you still have those two VHSs? No. Okay. Where are they? They are at my friend's house. I gave him a lot of the VHSs my mom and dad did not want anymore. He collects them. Okay. Fair enough. The second thing is, did you get a churro or hot dog from the Costco food court when you left that day? No. My mom never let me get any of the fucking ice cream there. What? Why? Because we had food at home, Nathan. But I mean, it's like a dollar fifty. I think it's still a dollar fifty for the hot look. Dog I got and, fat in college. Okay, my uh, parents made sure I was a twig. A in, dollar by high school. By the time high school was over, the fact that it's still a dollar fifty is is actually pretty insane. I love Costco. By the way, I just want to point out back to Space Jam. Both those movies have Wayne Knight in them, so I guess he's technically a hero from. Oh, childhood. he is in Space Jam, isn't he's he? He's the best part of Space Jam. Oh my God, he's <laughs> yeah, Wayne Knight is in both in, in both of them. Wayne Knight is still alive. I, I wish him very many more years. On oh this Earth. my goodness, Newman. I mean, like of everyone that died in Jurassic Park, I feel like the one that really deserved it was Gennaro. Listen, here's the thing about Nedry. Okay, quickly, quickly, I want to say this: he's a bad person but I'm for worker solidarity and in the, you know, he's not being paid enough. So, I mean, his one, his one, his one redeeming factor is that he did not, at least in the movie, turn off the velociraptor fences. That is his like one saving grace. Even Nedry knew not to mess with them. (laughs) Don't put them off. Uh, That was Samuel L. Jackson's character. And we'll get to that later. But regardless, it's like, I get it. Um, maybe he could have waited until like the people were back from the tour and then be like, okay, now I'll steal everything. Uh, he had to go. I mean, I do agree. I do agree. He had to make that. Oh, boat. you're right. He had to oh, make never the mind. Sh- the ship was I'm leaving, sorry. man. I'm sorry. You know what? Now, you know what? You convinced me. Fuck Nedry. <laughs> I'm, back, I'm back on board. 
<laughs> I, I, you know what? I was just trying to see if I could like a half white guy play devil's advocate. And then I realized it was stupid halfway Look, through. Listen, I believe in worker solidarity, pay your workers. That's but his what financial problems were his problems. Yeah, Nathan, I do, I okay? do believe there are your problems, Dennis. <laughs> Thanks, dad. But uh, this making of doc is it's about 15 minutes long. You can find it on daily motion. We'll post the link in below in the description. And if you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's awesome. And if you have kids, make them watch it and they'll pursue a career in film and bring shame and indifference to the family. That is exactly right. Shame mostly. Let's move on. Do you want to move to the facts section? Hell yes, I, I would do. love you to move to the facts section. Okay, I'm I'm pulling the facts up right now. Just so we understand what this this bit next bit is. Um, I've written these facts. These are actual facts about the movie. Nick has never seen these before. He's going to take time to read them. I mean, these are all real facts, just with some some other stuff included. Number one, fact number one. Jurassic Park was released on June eleventh, nineteen ninety three, to a fifty point two million dollar opening weekend earning a total of $842 million in its time in theaters, placing it at number nine on the all-time domestic box office list, adjusted for inflation. Now, its competition in the summer of 1993 included Last Action Hero, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Cliffhanger, starring Sylvester Stallone, and The Firm, starring Gary Busey. I mean, I mean, in general, listen, defend yourself. Here's the thing. (laughs) We at the uh, more unsolicited white guy opinion on movies, uh, one and a half white guys podcast are big fans of the abuse. We're big fans. The man, the man deserves our attention. He deserves our attention. He deserves more Oscars. He deserves more roles. He is an American icon and a treasure. I miss that man. He's not even dead. I just miss him. I He's, he not never he's not dead, right? He never left. He's not dead. He's right? not dead. Okay, no, good. he's not <laughs> dead. I was. We I, would, I, I, I we would. We would. We would. We would. To know, we we do have like a Gary Busey. The the way England was worried about the Queen, we're worried about Gary. <laughs> 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 we were very concerned for the man. All right, fact All right. number two. Jurassic Park is based on the novel of the same name, written by Michael. It's gonna come back from the grave to kill me, Crichton. And he was paid $2 million by Universal for the rights to adapt the story before this novel was even finished. Can you imagine being paid for the rights to adapt a story you're currently working on and then finishing it? As, as, as opposed to being paid for the rights to the story, but taking so long to finish writing the next book that adaptation eventually catches up. So they run out of source material and try to make shit up on their own, but everyone hates it. And the last season is so bad that everyone dislikes the entire show by proxy. You know who you are. Where is Winds of Winter? <laughs> yeah, he was paid like two million, and he was still writing the book. I, like, I, it wasn't I actually did yet. not know that he was paid two million. I mean, that's pretty. He, the book was when the book published in ninety. So the novel came out in nineteen ninety. The story takes place in eighty nine. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I think they were looking at adapting it very quickly. So he was paid $2 million before I think it was even finished. He was probably close to finishing it, I'm sure. Um, you know what I think? I imagine that um, like Universal and other big studios have essentially people that are working with editors and copywriters that, you know, if something, if something big is coming out or like, you know, like somebody's working on a novel that they want to adapt, they're probably already there. You know what I mean? Yes. To be like, I will pay you for this right now. And he's Michael like, Crichton. I have not even come up with the name of the book yet. Well, Michael Crichton, he had already made movies himself well, at yeah. that point. Like he was, he was a big name. People, do, I don't know if people know this, that Jurassic Park didn't like put him on the map. You it's know? true. Yeah. Yeah. He had other stuff. He he has another thing. So Jurassic Park. The Andromeda the, strain, I think really kind of, of course, made his career, honestly. The, the thing about Jurassic Park is it's about a form of life that you can't control breaking out of a theme park. And killing everyone, not to be confused with Westworld, which is about a form of life you can't control, breaking out of a theme park and killing everyone. <laughs> if only Congo had yeah, a theme yeah. park. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, that's the thing. One of them, one of them is androids. One of them is dinosaurs. It's all in a theme park. Cong- Congo is a movie that's both memorable and unmemorable at the same time because i know we have watched it together but i can't remember we've a, watched congo but i can't remember a fucking thing i'm sure about i'm gonna it. read it one day but like i hear it's a great book but yeah, the movie yeah. is atrocious it's the movie bad. is a ripoff of this it, the they were try, they were writing the coattails of this jurassic park yeah and they try to go for the fantasy they try to go from the whims 
the, the whimsy and like the uh, kind of the subtle familial elements that Spielberg goes for. Yeah. But, um, it, um, it's so false flat on its face. It's all totally inconsistent. It's and gorillas, it's just, right? It's gorillas, it's, right? Well, uh, it, there's a gorilla and then I don't know how the book goes, but at the end of the movie, you find out there are these really kind of mutant gorillas. Oh, yeah. The mutant, the like zombie gorillas. They build them up well, but then when you get to them, they just kind of they fall don't, flat. They don't look that great. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> that's that's how it is. I mean, like, I mean, well, I mean, once you see them, you're just kind of like, okay, whatever. But like, they're they're built up to be like the most terrifying things, and yeah. ever. and that's what the Velociraptors are built up as. Like, you you see all these similarities. Yeah, like, you you see similarities, lots like that. They had everybody who has worked on that set had Jurassic Park in their mind. Fact number three: Despite taking place on an island filled with dinosaurs. Jurassic Park dinosaurs only got 15 minutes of actual screen time with a runtime of about two hours. This is equal to only about 11% of the movie. I am working on a similar concept with the new script titled the main characters in Jurassic Park arguing where it only shows what the dinosaurs were doing for the other 89% of the movie. While Jeff Goldblum laid around shirtless and Sam Jackson yelled at the computer screen for 10 minutes. <laughs> Please! <laughs> I hate this actor bullshit. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, if it's called Jurassic... Okay, look, this is my point. If it's called Jurassic Park and then the dinosaurs are only there for 11% of the movie, we make another Jurassic... We make, like, a Jurassic Park 1B. Okay, we don't go two. We go like 1.5. <laughs> what is it Lion King does? Like Lion King 1.5 or one, something? One and a half. <laughs> one and a half. Okay, so we do that. We do that. We call this one the main characters of Jurassic Park arguing, right? But we work on just the dinosaurs. We don't even have the main characters. The main characters it. of Jurassic Park arguing, but it's all told from the point of view of that sick triceratops. <laughs> <laughs> The one that just laid there the entire movie. It was like, uh, and then like when they're flying out, he was like the, the helicopter. West Indian Lila. <laughs> the one, the one where the hell. Then at the end of the movie, where the helicopter's leaving, he's like, "I'm actually feeling a little bit better." <laughs> I mean, that is that not what happens in the movie? Like, it's Jeff Goldblum lays there saying, "Maybe don't do that," and Sam Jackson yells at the computer screen. That's well, it. listen, well, and, you all. and Hammond eats. Uh, and Muldoon Richard, yells at all of them. Right, yeah, Muldoon yells at all of them. Everett and shot Richard Art and Barrow. Attenborough eats ice cream like that. That's what they do. Spared no expense. Spared. No, he spared a lot of expense. He didn't even put locks on the doors of the car. That's why they were able to leave. I told you we needed locking mechanisms on the car doors. I mean, he he didn't like put up a backup generator for the rat, Raptor fences. Just in case the main power went down. That isn't is, that a little concerned that the most dangerous dinosaurs and the smartest dinosaurs are like to. You have to admit, though, the buildup is great. I mean, it's the a great buildup. Build all the buildups to the dinosaurs. I mean, you, you're, are you're 100% correct. I, I enjoy it. I'm just saying that in the real world, logistically, if I was to have the most dangerous dinosaurs 10 feet away from where all of the like regular people are because we can't put them into the regular park because they're too dangerous. And then all of a sudden the power goes down and the raptors are like, oh, cool, power's off. And they're able to just smash through the fences. Be a little concerned. <laughs> Fact number four. Phil Tibbet was hired originally to do stop motion animation effects for the dinosaurs, but found that his work was no longer necessary after seeing the CGI T-Rex in test shots, which Spielberg preferred. He then stayed on as a supervisor, making sure the dinosaur's movement was animated realistically and was given the title Dinosaur Supervisor in the credits. The internet has made a joke out of this by accusing Phil of his negligence on set in handling the dinosaurs, resulting in all of the on-screen deaths in the movie. However, I have seen Phil Tibbetts' film Mad God and am now convinced that it wasn't negligence, but intentional. He deliberately let those dinosaurs out to devour the cast and has much worse planned for all of us. We will all bear witness to the horror he has no doubt unleashing at this moment upon the world. Woe to those of us that remain. Repent, for the day of Phil's reckoning is nigh. Mad God was fucking insane. Mad God is really good. Mad God, I didn't like it. You didn't? I wasn't into it. I you, just thought it was insane. It's just, it's a great movie though. I mean like, <laughs> sure, sure, fair enough. It's not, fair enough. It's not like a standard narrative, but it is, 
very stylistic. It's, and it, that man was sitting on it, sitting on that the entire time he's been working on special effects. He's just been thinking about making this movie good for him or wasn't into it. Honestly, you'll be the first to go now that Phil is going to unleash his wrath. Wayne Knight got got it easy <laughs> on set. You're going to get it much worse. Whatever the fuck he comes up with. Phil Tippett, you're a legend. Respect you, buddy. Oh, my God. So Phil Tippett, most notable for his work with um, stop motion animation. Back in 85, he had done a movie, which is like 10 minutes long, called Prehistoric Beasts. All stop motion. Looks really good, you know, for it is. Had made the dinosaurs for that. He was planning to do the same for this. But I think uh, Industrial Lights and Magic is the one that did yes, the, that's them. the uh, CGI. And when he saw the T-Rex smashing through the, the, you know, the scene, which smashes through the fence, he, was, he made the joke, oh, I think I'm extinct. But then that was worked in to the script. I think I'm out of a job. And yeah, so, like, and don't you mean extinct? That's where it was his interaction with Spielberg and all that. And Spielberg was like, that's fantastic. Let's throw that in there. Jeff, Jeff, go ahead and Jeff, say I that. need you to say this. Jeff, I need you to say this. Sam, please say this. <laughs> but like, that's where the joke comes from. It's from Phil Tippett. I love that you know that because I actually already knew that. But anyway, now you know. Because it's in the fucking 50 minute documentary, actually. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is again, we're plugging this 50 minute documentary. Yes. Please watch it. We'll, throw, Please we'll, we'll watch find it. a clip of it. Unless or, you have the VHS and never watched it. Just watch it. What, go to Costco. Go and dust off your VHS player. And go back to Costco. I guarantee they have more of them. All right. Fact number five. Did you know that if you go to film school, you will meet a bunch of generic white dudes that only watch Scorsese and Tarantino movies. But if you tell them that you've already seen both directors' filmographies, they will scramble for something else to tell you to watch finally recommending Jurassic Park. But completely seriously and unironically, like it's some French avant-garde film and then act like they did you a favor. Dude, like, of course, Garrett and Kyle would recommend this movie. (laughs) I I mean, this is more of an opinion, but I feel like we both met those people in film school where they were like, I mean, you know, I mean, like everyone was, you know, like, you, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing to come into film school being obsessed with Scorsese and Tarantino. Nathan and I went to film school together. I mean, I, I mean, I, this is my point. It's not bad to be obsessed with Tarantino and Scorsese to be in film, you know, going to film school. I would say like after you watch a bunch of movies and stuff, if you're still like four years into film school and still like adamant and you don't really watch anything else, it's, it's just weird. I feel like I, I, I met a bunch of those people, had conversations with them. And this actually comes where some guy was like, well, have you seen Jurassic Park? Yes, I've seen Jurassic Park. Who the hell hasn't seen Jurassic Park? No shit. Yeah, yeah really. That that happened. Well, I was like, what? I don't know. I was like, do, do you think I'm dumb? Like, I lived under a rock. I don't understand. Why would you recommend me that movie? And then by the time you're like a third year or something, you're talking about the guy that made Old Boy. Yeah. And all his shit. <laughs> you just, you, listen, you just want to, like, the, the film school is you You're starting. In, everyone's just into foreign films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But film school is you starting by saying, I love Coppola, I love Scorsese, I love Tarantino. And then, you know, uh, by the third, hopefully by third year, you're just watching a lot of weird shit. Like, that's really what you want to watch. And then this, this leads us into our next section, which is why did you make more? And the, the, so many more have been made. As of very recently, actually, um, more being more Jurassic parks or worlds, more Jurassic movies. So after the success of Jurassic Park one, Spielberg and Universal approached Michael Crichton and said, would you write a sequel to Jurassic Park? Michael Crichton said, sure. He wrote Jurassic Park, the lost world. He wrote the lost world. It was just called the lost world. And it was, um, I think it's considered one of his least favorite books it's his least favorite book but also it's it's, um, it it, but also by fans and like general audiences it's just like it's not a good book it's not as good but because malcolm just comes back like and and it's it's done very tongue-in-cheek he brings him back but also i I do appreciate how he labeled the idea of at least for sci-fi world building um labeling something the lost world after like sir arthur conan doyle's novel that, you know, was just like, oh, you know, it's like the Skull Island. Like, this is just a land that time forgot where dinosaurs still exist and all that stuff. So instead of just it being a land that time forgot, it was 
a place that a corporation messed with way too much and then didn't tell anybody about so that they were lost. Coming, lost. Yeah. So then they're coming off the island. Dinosaurs exist, but not for the reason they survived because they were forced back into life and then abandoned because the company went bankrupt. Like that's the whole thing. I, the difference between the movie and the book, at least in the end of the first movie is that at the end of the first book uh, for Jurassic park, the Costa Rican military I don't even know. They nuke the island. They bomb the island. They like firebomb it. I don't know. Does Costa Rica have like a big military? I don't know if they do. <laughs> uh, but, but that's very interesting. <laughs> like how they, uh, like the, the first thing they hey, do. Know, hey, Mexico had a fucking space sent. Was they, well, yeah, South the, Park, Mexico had, oh, God. had a NASA. No. Had their own NASA. <laughs> okay. My whole point is this. Like Michael Crichton wrote these novels because he was worried about the amount of money and corporate interest being put into something as dangerous as genetic manipulation and genetic engineering, just generally science. It's different when it's like a bunch of different people working under the header of the government versus something where it's like, there's like eight to 15 to 20 different biotech companies doing whatever the hell they're doing. And there's nobody regulating. This is more prevalent in the first movie but um, it does kind of just, and I, I think Ebert said this, and I think he criticized the movie for it. It really does just kind of turn into a monster movie. It by does. The it. But that, those themes are most, um, those themes are most present in the first, that the first movie. The yeah. second movie, they try to be, and they fall flat. Yeah. Because, every, because the second movie is very, very dumb. Yeah, and then you want to cheer for the dinosaurs in part of the time. A little bit, like, yes. I, I Listen, I really do want the dinosaurs every time to kill Julianne more because she wanders around with the... the not only do, do do her and Vince Vaughn... He's trying to get in. And then he learned how to open doors. <laughs> my cat, my cat's trying to get in the room. <laughs> it's the thing, but like... Here's the thing, like Julianne Moore and, and Vince Vaughn... And we love Julianne Moore, but she... God damn, she's, she's really dumb and she's fucking, re, she's kind of insufferable in Lost World. Yeah, but that's the whole thing. Like, like this is the weirdest thing. It's like her and Vince Vaughn bring that T Rex baby back to the trailer. What is the worst that could happen? And like they look at each other, and they're like, yeah. And that happens in the book too. But even in the book, half the 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 people in the book are like, "You're insane." No, this is so dumb. I mean, like, Malcolm worst says that ideas, too. I mean, Malcolm dude. and his daughter say that too. Basically, yeah, they acknowledge what, like what you're doing is kind of fucked right now. Okay, this is so stupid. Like, like this is like one of the worst ideas, but then also like, let's just say they get past that. Okay. Learn a valuable lesson. No, Julianne Moore walks around the entire movie with like on the Island with like a, that shirt drenched in the T-Rex blood T-Rex junior T-Rex baby blood. So in general, I think we'll have to agree that, uh, lost world's probably the best sequel lost worlds. Um, I enjoy it. It's but fun. Even though Julianne Moore did get all of those people killed. Do you have any memory of two coming out of Lost World coming out? Not at all. Okay. Do you have a memory of three coming out? Yes. Yes. Same here. Okay. My dad hyped three up so much for me. They went and saw it in theaters. And I saw they it were twice. Like, they went and saw it in theaters. I didn't get to go. I was only in first grade. And um, my dad hyped that movie up for me like crazy. I think I first got to watch it when it came out on video. It, I first got to watch it at my friend's house. Jurassic Park 3 still did intimidate me. It still did scare me. Like anything Spino, any, anytime Spino kills. It's the Pteranodon walking through the mist, looking like a fucking demon black knight oh, on that bridge. Oh, the thing coming out of the mist. Yeah, that was that pretty scary. Oh, Jesus Christ, what is that? shot. That is so good. There's some great shit in that movie. You know what I mean? I like the raptor pretending to be dead in the, that re- <laughs> in the, in the tub. Just like, it's got like, it, it, I'm making a stupid face right now, but it's like, <laughs> Here's my thing with the third one, right? They they say like, you know how the movie opens and it shows Isla, Isla Sorna and then it says restricted, just flashes restricted, not restricted enough, dude. Like not only, not then only it just cuts to a dude doing a tour. Yeah. On the boat. Like that's my point. Not only did a boat get in and I don't know what ate those guys on the boat. You're going to have to see Jurassic, uh, Jurassic Park Park three if you want to see this. But then later they get a whole ass plane over the island and then land on it like if they really wanted to stop people they could but that's also- what i mean they just kept acting like it didn't exist i don't think they really put 
heightened security that much. They, you know they I mean? didn't, but they radioed to be like, Hey, you should leave like that. Maybe they're also of the opinions. Like, you know what? You get stuck there. That's your own goddamn fault. And you know what? You know, looking back, I would also be in the same thing. If you knew there was an Island full of dinosaurs and you were told this is, this is illegal. It's not okay for you to go there. Don't go there. And then you went there anyway. And you were like, Hey, help. I might not be inclined to help you. It'd be like, <laughs> really dude. Like now I have to risk like a bunch of other people. Cause I'm not going. I'm not going to this fucking island. I saw Jurassic World three times in theaters. So that's once. one of the that's one of the two movies I've seen thrice in theaters. Jurassic World. I saw it opening night. What was the other one? Hobbs and Shaw. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I see Jurassic World opening night, and I see it a second time with my mom and dad because they're big fans of Jurassic Park. Sure. And uh, I went on a date later that summer with a gal who really wanted to go see it. So there was my third time. You went and saw it with her. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. God, I never wanted to watch that movie after that third time again. I was just like, I, I, this is, this is, it's not that I was disliking it. I always thought it was a decent enough movie, but after a while you do get burned out on watching something, especially in a row, you know? Yeah. Listen, there's a lot of things and you know, I get, I get shit for this a lot. Um, my problem with the first Jurassic world, this is the, this is when it, I leave that. This is when it jumped the shark for me. It's the repairing the Jeep scene. I just, I just, I just was like, okay, okay, no, I can't, I can't get behind it. Like everyone's like, Oh, it's a movie where they're cloning dinosaurs. I'm like, yeah. And if they're cloning dinosaurs, the, the rules of applying, like fixing a combustible engine definitely still apply. Like, I'm not going to get into it about, like, that Jeep is 20 years old. What does he say? Remember when we fixed Grandpa's old car? I'm just like, did Grandpa teach them everything that one time? They know how to fix fucking anything? Let's just say they know everything. Let's just say they know everything, okay? All of that has been sitting in the Costa Rican or or island humidity for 20 years it has been sitting there essentially and it's able to be like put back and like fixed and like something works right i was like dude this is not good like this can't work and like yeah i get it it's fan service and all that shit but it's just like i didn't care about that the first time it's only when people brought it up i was just like oh yeah that doesn't make any sense um that fight at the end's awesome though that whole dino, I mean, the dinosaurs dino fight, fight to yeah. the the dinosaurs fight to the death is all is all cool. But there's a lot of that movie is kind of boring, honestly. All the characters you do not care about, and when it focuses on them, it's very boring. Yeah, and that's what I'll give Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom's pacing is a little better because you're like, ah, oh, these fucking characters again. But then they're already at the island. I'm like. We're not even at the 20 minute mark. They're at the fucking island. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Quickly. Okay, move this along. Good. With Justice like, Smith being his awkward self. Uh, uh, I like him more than Detective, Detective Pikachu. Pikachu. <laughs> Listen, at least for the Jurassic, Jurassic World 1, I felt like just wanted to be Jurassic Park, um, but didn't do it well. Jurassic World 2 was just Jay, Jay Bayona doing like really good stylistic gothic horror. That's that I the, really one of the best things about it is it's... Fallen Kingdom looks great. It's the best style. It's the most stylized Jurassic Park movie. It, it is. It looks really good. It makes you want more of it. Yeah. I really would be okay with J.A. Bayona making like really shitty Jurassic Parks from here on out. But as long as they looked like that, I'd be like, okay, like, cool. We might as well. This this could be an Edgar Allan Poe story. Yeah. <laughs> it's the fall of the House of Usher almost with the, <laughs> with the Indoraptor cackling on top of the... It looks like dinosaurs are loose in Arkham Asylum. Like, and and at one point the, the music swells up, and this this really gothic choir is just like singing their souls out while this this inbred raptor thing climbs to the top. This serial killer looking thing just climbs to the top of the manor and screeches at the moon while it's raining. <laughs> while, while it's like raining. a fucking werewolf, <laughs> like it's raining and there's like lightning behind it. That and stuff like- is so fun that is so cool it's a lot like, of fun the, it's so cool like i think the best thing about that scene is it, it just reminds me of the time i was watching it with nathan and uh once the interrupter makes it to the top of the manor and he's how is that the moon nathan just went gotham <laughs> he's really brooding like he's really like this 
This world's tearing itself apart. The city's tearing. Yeah, that's what you said. You t- <laughs> the the thing just screeches on the moon. The city's went, tearing itself apart. The city's tearing itself apart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna, like, if the story's gonna suck, can we at least stylize it? That's like the the big thing. Like, at least regard. That's what I'll give Fallen Kingdom credit for. The story sucks. It doesn't like. I don't like it. It makes almost no sense. Um, it, it's not. It's not a good Jurassic movie. But it is a really stylized Jurassic movie. And for that, I give it credit. It's not a good Jurassic movie. It's a good dinosaur movie. Though. Oh, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. It, Fallen Kingdom, everyone was like, the worst Jurassic Park movie. And then Dominion yeah. came out and people were like, you know what? In myself, let me, let me give, let me give Fallen you Kingdom know what? another Fallen look. Let me give Fallen Kingdom another Fallen look Kingdom real quick. might not be the worst anymore. In fact, it might be a little good. <laughs> might be decent, yeah. <laughs> Dominion's bad because... The dinosaurs mean nothing anymore, but also the characters mean nothing anymore. We just don't. In fact, we kind of hate Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard at this point because we're God. just like, we do not care about either of you. Neither of you are characters. At this They're point. so unlikable. Yeah. And I'll go with this. They get rid of those two from Fallen Kingdom pretty quick. In Justice Dominion. Smith. Oh, oh, my God. What's, the, gr- Smith what's, the, what's the girl's name? Justice Smith and um, Faye. From Netflix Cowboy Bebop. Oh yeah, dude, she's in it. She for deserves like, better. She's in it for like <laughs> maybe ninety seconds, and then she's never comes back. Justice Smith's in it for ninety seconds, leaves, and then comes back later for like two minutes. Eh, Omar Sy comes back too. I don't know why they did that to him. Benny Barry. Oh, the other the other Raptor trainer. Yes, yeah, yes, he comes back fighting the Atrociraptors. Yes, yeah. I think a dinosaur scene could have been way fun. No, where where the thing shows up and chases the human characters around. Yeah, but it's, it's like not. we got to give this thing screen time because we we hype this thing up as like the big bad dinosaur. Like he called it his Joker, Colin Trevorrow. He's like this dinosaur <laughs> that is, is the not Joker. a Joker. <laughs> <laughs> there's this there's a YouTube video I found. Of He's like, like someone, oh, it's like the someone Joker. Put, someone put Joker dialogue over whenever that thing is like on screen yeah. in like the prologue that's not in the fucking movie. My father. Yeah, it's literally that. Like the King of the stands up. He's just like, why so serious? <laughs> my father. So stupid. My father was a tyrannosaur and a fiend. <laughs> I think we're both in actual agreement on this. Is The Lost World is our favorite. It's it's we consider the best sequel and it's Dominion the best is sequel. D- Dominion is the worst sequel. The worst, clearly. We're not we're not counting Camp Cretaceous. That's its own thing. We're just talking about movies, feature films uh, specifically. I mean, Cam Cretaceous is really good. You you heard what Colin Trevorrow said um, recently. He said, I don't think any sequels should have been made to Jurassic Park. And then he said, we're making more. (laughs) (laughs) We really should have stopped this. (laughs) All right. He's like like an addict. Stop. He's like, shouldn't have had that second hit. Anyway, can I buy some more blow from you? <laughs> it's, it's like really what he's. Yeah. It, it, Jurassic Park, though, is it's an icon. It's it's a movie of movies. It's it's one of the most influential things. In it's one of the biggest blockbusters ever to make. Yeah, ever. And, and it just still is a solid film. It's always going to be solid. We all, we will always love it. It, 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 it. No one can ever take it away from us. And. So out of a hundred, one out of a hundred, what would you rate this movie? Out of a hundred, Jurassic Park, the original. One out of a hundred. I'm going to go ahead and give it, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 90. The year it came, I'm going to give it a 93. Yeah, 93, yeah, yeah, the year right. it came out. Also the year I was born. So that'll Very work. Nice. 93. Now, I would, I love letter grades. I would give it an A, but if I, if you were to tell me like, yo, you're, you got a one of a, one out of a hundred, one out of a hundred, it'd probably be an 85, 86, 85, 86. I know that's technically like a B. Is it B 85? Average? So is it 85 or 86? Uh, 85, 85. That is an average score of 89. 89. That is a B plus. What a movie. For I mean, that. you can't go wrong with it. You really can't. It's, I mean, it's such a, it's, it's, you know I love to watch this movie, Hawaii. Like the second would time I ever watched fun. Jurassic Park, I was in Hawaii. Um, they filmed I brought a, the VHS a lot of and we there. ended up watching and we ended up watching it again. And it's still, such a good movie. And it still. still was just so impactful. Like my second viewing of it, that was my second viewing of it. And that still like sticks out. That was still a very memorable moment. Cause I was still like, so 
captivated by it. All right. So we're into our final portion of the podcast. Now, this is completely uh, for fun. This is a concept I came up with based upon never being let into clubs by bouncers. This is the rule of uh, will I let Nick in the club? I give him a genre, an actor that might be in specific movies or a type of movie. He has a few seconds to name that a movie that comes to mind that fits the genre or restrictions I give him. And then I decide if I let him into the club. It's completely arbitrary and completely up to me. Nick, in order to get into this fake club that in post-production, the music is pumping for right now on the, on the inside is over on the outside. <laughs> you will have to name me a movie that falls into this genre. And you have seven seconds to do this. Sci-fi. The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. Thinking about it in depth, I'm a sucker for John Carpenter. You get in the club today. I Welcome in. It. I'll open the door. I am granted entry. All right, everybody. Listen to my voice as it fades away and the music gets louder. Thank you for listening to the more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies podcast or for short one and a half white guys. Be sure to rate and subscribe and follow on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. And be sure to tell a friend about the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we kind of talk about the movie. Thank you for listening. Bye. Everybody have a good night.